Are you for reals? This is your new car. Is this real? <laughs> this is real. Oh my god! We would like to present you, a precious child, with a check for three hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. <laughs> it's a new car. Thank you, Whitney. We are going to pay your mortgage for the next 10 months. What? Oh my God. <sighs> this isn't a dream, it's just a miracle. Thank you very much. I'm telling you, every day there's more blessings. And this <laughs> is a huge run. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The resiliency of Coloradans is something to be admired. Through the worst tragedies, our state comes together to help our neighbors in need. Shortly after the Marshall Fire, we set up the Denver 7 Gives Wildfire Fund to support those directly impacted. Your generosity helped us raise and hand out just over $700,000. Almost immediately, your donations were put to use. They helped the Cullen family go on a shopping spree at Target just days after the fire. Thank you so much. I, I do watch this segment all the time and it's always so touching. I usually find myself in tears. Um, I just never thought that we'd be on the receiving end. They also helped a CU Boulder student refurnish his apartment where everything he had was destroyed. Even though this is such a sad situation, it really has made me feel joy at times just seeing the generosity of of everyone in the community. Throughout this half hour, we will share stories of how your donations were distributed over the past year. We begin with our biggest donation to date, $300,000 donated to a precious child. Here is Denver 7 anchor Shannon Ogden. That's our bedroom. This is home sweet home for Gina Hellert and wife Jen Smith, Gina's dad's basement in Gina's childhood home. And they're grateful for a roof over their heads, but up until December 30th of last year, their home was an 1,800 square foot, two bedroom, two bath house in Original Town Superior. It was destroyed along with 1,100 other homes in the Marshall Fire. I saw the neighbor running out with her baby and thought, yeah, what's going yeah, on? So I stepped out onto our front deck and there were embers hitting our wooden deck and I screamed for her and she screamed for the neighbor and we all just ran. Like the other Marshall Fire families, it wasn't just the house Gina and Jen lost. It was everything. Pictures, chairs, plates, a car, sweaters, coats, shoes, everything. We had Very just sweaters. gotten um, a wedding ring of my mom's and a wedding ring of my dad's mm. and he had given them to us on Christmas Eve as a gift in a wooden box that my oldest brother made. It was a beautiful presentation. And we put it home, I put it in my jewelry box and it's gone. So while they sort through the tangled, arduous web that is getting money from the insurance company to rebuild, they wait here, still paying the mortgage on a house that no longer exists. It's a kick in the teeth, it really is. It hurts. Paying for nothing. Thanks to the generous viewers who have donated to Denver 7 Gives, we were able to give Gina and Jen $5,000 through the nonprofit A Precious Child to help with their mortgage. That's a great, great help. Yes. We appreciate yes. it very much. And we're all rooting for you. Thanks. Thank you. A Precious Child in Boulder County has been a vital resource for families who lost so much in the fire. They've been providing household items and essentials and connecting families with the resources and services they need. They didn't have family here. This is Maria Martinez with A Precious Child. We met in Superior's devastated Sagamore neighborhood. The families you still talk about, are, are there still tears? Yes. Oh, that's yes. heartbreaking. In addition to the other needs, 150 families now have reached out to a precious child for help with rent and mortgage payments. You know, they're barely starting to figure out how to rebuild. Um, we know that the pricing is higher now than when these families bought their houses back in the day. Oh, even them renting, higher. yeah, even renting now, we've heard that families are paying $500 more for their mortgage, and renting mm. their apartments. Well, Denver 7 Gives wanted to help them help these families. So we teamed up to create the Marshall Fire Housing Fund. All right, uh, Maria, Karina, um, on behalf of Denver 7, uh, from Denver 7 Gives, we would like to present you, you a precious child with a check for $300,000. Thank you <laughs> so, so much. You do not know the difference this is gonna make to those families that are literally 
trying to survive with paying rent and covering mortgages and all that. This Listen, uh, all of our hearts collectively broke thank when this you. happened and that we could do anything. Yeah. I know how, how much that means. So yeah. thank you thank all for you. what you're doing. So, go, so go, go put it to good use. We reached back out to a precious child and they say they wrote the last check from that $300,000 donation earlier this month. In total, $300,000 went to 64 families directly impacted. But our giving to a precious child did not end there. In April, we were able to partner with Amazon to fulfill wish lists provided by a precious child. We donated $40,000 worth of new items, ranging from bedding to toiletries, laundry detergent to coffee pots. It truly was a Denver 7 Gives extravaganza, with Denver 7 morning anchors Nicole Brady and Brian Sanders helping to unload Amazon trucks. Shannon Ogden and I were also out there. We were able to help unpack, sort, and organize all those items. Just three weeks ago, you helped us make sure Marshall Fire victims could feel a sense of normalcy this holiday season. We put together another giving extravaganza. Nicole Brady and Brian Sanders were there as we once again teamed up with a precious child in Amazon. It really was like being a kid on Christmas morning for people of all ages. It's incredible that they remember us here almost a year later that there's still a lot that we need from from our neighbors from you know from anyone who can help us out especially this time of year when all of a sudden you're realizing you don't have those Christmas ornaments and decorations that that you've collected for years and years and we can't forget our friends at Superior Rising it's an organization dedicated to rebuilding the town of Superior through your donations, we were able to present Superior Rising with a $25,000 check to help in their efforts. You've helped people of all ages. $50,000 of your donations went to Hope Lives Here, Colorado. It started as a Facebook group that has helped build bedrooms for kids who lost everything in the fire. This is a milestone for these kids that they're never gonna forget, and it's a, it's a scary one. And so if we can do something that will at least change it a little bit and make it to where when they look back, they go, do you remember when we got that brand new bedroom? I want them to be able to look back and know how much they were loved. Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen introduces us to two sisters who received some of that love. Time to roll up our sleeves and do some heavy lifting. Building not one, but two bedrooms for two little girls who lost everything in the Marshall Fire. When you and I met, we were at our first house, and today this will be 52 when we complete today. You've done 52 children's bedrooms. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. Lindsay McMorrin founded the Hope Lives Here Colorado Build a Bedroom program. For the last two months, Denver 7 Gives donations have been paying for magical reveals like this one. Oh my God! Nine-year-old Liam couldn't believe his Rubik's Cube room. Are you serious? Alrighty, upstairs. Volunteers take on three to nine rooms a week, donating strong backs and strong spirits to make this happen. It's not just a bed, it's the art supplies, it's the Pokemon cards, it's, it's the little things for them. On this day, the theme is dance. They both are big dancers and love New York City and love the ballet. And for these sisters, this moment means more than just a pretty room. You keep thinking that you're gonna walk back into your house and then you're not, and you're never gonna walk back in there. It's knowing they have something that's theirs once again. Whoa! It's <laughs> so cool. And there's a mirror. I've never had a mirror in my room. Whoa! Ida loves her New York themed retreat, complete with art supplies. It's so pretty. And Tuva oh is speechless oh over her ballet bedroom. What's clear is they both feel as special as we hoped. It means so much. It just, it feels like instead of bringing back the old, you can make new things. You can think about how many people are trying to like feel what you're feeling and are trying, they want to help. They just want to help. For Denver 7 Gives. Does it feel more like home now? A lot more like home. I'm Jacqueline Allen. Oh, yay. We have a lot more giving to get to throughout this half hour. We will show you how your donations allowed us to give everything from cars. Are you for reals? This is your new car. Is this real? <laughs> this is real. To housing. So some of these fire victims could start getting back on their feet. Just keep 
one foot in front of another and the good things will come and um, have to be patient but persistent. Welcome back to this Marshall Fire Denver 7 Gives special. The stories of those who lost everything in the Marshall Fire are all uniquely different, but have a common thread. And for one woman in Louisville, her loss comes after an especially tough two years of the pandemic. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon has her story. It's funny because I can still picture the community the way it was, um, even though it's not here anymore. An address, all but gone. But I can also still decorate my house. I've made my address out of tiles. <laughs> Almost two decades of life in what remains. This was my fruit basket, my dog bowl, just random stuff. I don't want to say it gets easier to look at because it doesn't. The past and present colliding. I can't believe it's February. Like, where did the last month go? For Kim Christensen. The pandemic is still here, along with the fire. <laughs> Who works just up the hill spending 18 years there as a nurse. It's like my home. Um, it was my home before this was my home. Her hospital spared in the Marshall Fire, but not from the realities of the pandemic. You don't want to wish anybody to see that. But her neighborhood, something you have to see, and another tragedy where the same comforting words come into play. We're all in this together, you know, and we've heard that through the pandemic, but this feels a little bit closer knit. With either the virus or the fire, an end sometimes seems out of reach. Biggest fears going forward is um, the cost on how much it will be to rebuild. Like so many, Christensen says her family is underinsured. We are going to pay your mortgage for the end of the year. So for the next 10 months. What? Thanks to the donations. Oh my God. <sighs> oh my God. In our Denver 7 Gives Wildfire Fund. That is so amazing. That'll help, hopefully help us rebuild. For a nurse who's been able to find the good in the toughest of times. I'm telling you, every day there's more blessings. Colette Bordelon. Yeah. This is a huge one. <laughs> Thank you. Denver 7. We reached back out to Kim and she says she hasn't had much of a chance to plan any of her rebuilding because she's still waiting on a permit from the city. You may remember the Camacho family. We first met them three weeks after the Marshall Fire. They lost their home in Superior just days after buying it. Well, they used the Disney movie Encanto to explain to their seven-year-old son what happened. You know, like in the movie, like the, the whole house crumbles down. And, and that was kind of my, you know, like my way of explaining him, to him that even though our house is gone, like, we can rebuild it. So like with our family. And they couldn't do it without your help. With your donations, we were able to surprise the Camachos with a storage unit to store all of their new things. Your donations also help pay for movers to help them get those things into their new storage unit. Plus, we were also able to give seven-year-old son Matias a toy from his favorite movie, Disney's Encanto. Storage spaces and temporary housing have been so critical for Marshall Fire victims as they wait to rebuild their homes. Meet Christiana DeRolf. We introduced you to her back in April. She is a single mom who lost everything in the Marshall Fire. And while she was waiting to rebuild her home, she was in need of temporary housing. On behalf of our Denver 7 Gives Foundation and our generous viewers, we actually wanted to present you with a check to help cover your rent for that new place you're going to be moving into. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. This, this, is, a lot of, this is a lot of help. A lot of help. Thank you. Of course, I can see the emotion in your eyes. What are you feeling? I don't want to cry this time on the cameras, <laughs> but those are happy tears. Um, just holding up, holding off. Um, I'm overwhelmed. I'm happily overwhelmed. We checked back in with Christiana, and she is right in the middle of the rebuilding process and sent us this video of her foundation laid down on her property. Your donations not only helped us provide housing for victims, but they also helped us provide new cars for families who needed them the most. One of those families was a tight-knit Boulder County family who lost three homes in the fire. They also lost four cars. With the help of you, our Jacqueline Allen was able to deliver a surprise. 
We've had Tenderie Grill for almost 23 years. If home is where the heart is, I'll get spoons, hold on. The Tandoori Grill in Boulder is the Gill family's second home. It's Indian style eggs. Their first homes were directly in the path of the Marshall Fire. I saw the fire coming over the hill. The emotions still raw for Gurjeet Danoa. She lived in Rock Creek, five minutes from her parents' and brothers' homes in Old Town Superior. They barely made it out. I got her on her oxygen. I had to carry her out of the house and put her in the car. I saw homes burning, and that's when I came to realize, like, I'm not going to have a house to go back to. All told, this family lost three homes, four cars, and almost everything they owned. Even the steel beams had melted. You know, there was literally nothing left. The one thing that survived their dad's trailer was stolen the day after the neighborhood reopened. To deal with all of this, they've had to shut down their Indian restaurant. Mentally, we need to take a time out. On top of that, juggling doctor's appointments for their mom has been a challenge. Coordinating who can take her to the hospital at what time, and so it's just busy on all of us. That is something we can help with, thanks to generous donations to Denver 7 Gives. Your family lost so much in the fire. On this day, we had a surprise for their whole family. It's a new car! I know, it's a good I'm so happy and so happy to change. So much. A replacement for the car she lost with a discount from Groove Automotive, which delivered it for free. The keys to thank your car. You, thank you very much. A little help for a long journey. Seeing the look on my mom's face, you don't realize that you need help. You, you know you need help, but you don't want to ask for it. So when people just give it to you, it's, it's just an amazing feeling. It really is. And you say like you don't have the words to say thank you. Their words came in the form of delicious comfort food mm. and a promise to reopen and rebuild because this is the home where their heart is. It represents us moving forward. It represents us rebuilding. Our heads are up and it's forward now. For Denver 7 Gives, I'm Jacqueline Allen. Tandoori Grill is back open in Boulder and your support can help this family rebuild some more. You can check them out at the intersection of Broadway and Table Mesa in Boulder. Your generosity also helped us get a new pickup truck for the Hogg family. We first met the family two weeks after the Marshall Fire. Their burned out pickup truck was one of the many possessions they had to leave behind. But nothing was better than being able to be on hand to give the Hogs a brand new pickup truck similar to their old one. Then there's the Van Leer family. The fire completely destroyed two of their cars. Another one had heavy damage, and that left the family not knowing how they could get their kids to swim practice or get to and from therapy. That is until you stepped in. Are you ready for this? Yes. Are you for reals? This is your new car. Is this real? <laughs> this is real. Here are the keys to your new car. Oh, thank you, Denver 7. Oh my God. This was only able to happen thanks to your donations and help from Groove Auto Group, which delivered the car for free and gave us a $1,500 discount. The Marshall Fire took out entire neighborhoods. And when the time came for Girl Scout cookie season, troops had no homes to sell to. How your donations were able to help Girl Scout troops meet their cookie selling goals. Plus, this teacher just wanted to help her kids learn. But after losing everything, her job became more difficult. After the break, how you helped take her on a shopping spree. Throughout the past half hour, we've been sharing how your donations have helped Marshall fire victims over the past year. You've helped with things like housing, new cars, and everyday supplies. But that's not all. Natasha Ambrose is a teacher at Eagle Ridge Academy in Brighton. She lost her home in Superior and struggled to afford supplies for her classroom. But you helped us give her classroom a makeover. Well, we do have a surprise for you. On behalf of our Denver 7 Gives Foundation and our generous viewers, we actually want to take you shopping because we know how difficult it's been for you after going through the Marshall Fire. So we are going to help you get supplies for your classroom. Thank you so much. We were able to go on a shopping spree to get everything from markers to pencils and notebooks to help Natasha welcome her kids into the classroom. One of our favorite stories over the past year is how your donations help Girl Scouts in both Louisville and Superior. Girl Scout cookie season came right after the Marshall Fire, and for these scouts, there were a lot fewer doors to knock on. So that is when Denver 7 Gives stepped in. Here is Jason Grenauer. Girl Scout cookies! 
It's cookie season. That time of the year when vest clad young girls become business women. That one and the one that's in her hand. Will that work? <laughs> Little entrepreneurs selling sweet treats at booths or going door to door in their neighborhoods. Pretty much the entire neighborhood, so. But for this fourth grade Girl Scout troop out of Louisville, it's gone. We have many girls in our troop that don't have a neighborhood anymore. When the Marshall Fire tore through Boulder County, it destroyed the homes of three members of the troop. What did you lose? Everything. Including their co-leader. Even our uniforms were lost. Just days after the fire, the troop was scheduled to meet. With the help of Girl Scouts of Colorado and donations from troops across the metro, they did. This is one small thing that we would have normally done, so let's just get there and everybody was glad that we did that. And when it came to whether or not the girls would sell cookies this year? I don't even think it was a question really about, I mean we did pose the question but I think in their minds it was not uh, like we're never going to do this. It was of course we're going to do cookies. <laughs> Which brings us to a Saturday morning outside of Louisville store. This is a menu, that one is... Thin mints and Samoas bringing that sense of normalcy. I just think it's awesome. Good for them. Poor girls. <laughs> the worst thing that ever happened to me when I was in fourth grade is, you know, I couldn't find my shoes. So, so no, it's, it's pretty impressive that they're willing to put in this kind of work. The more boxes that were bought, the bigger these smiles got. So why not give them one more reason to smile? Denver 7 would like to place an order for cookies. Oh. We would like to order $5,000 worth what? of cookies. <laughs> what do you think? I think it was like, wait, what? Wait, ah, oh! Funds from our Denver 7 Gives Wildfire Fund will help fund this little group for the year. Really shows us how generous our community is, how people are looking out for us. I'm blown away. There was no way we were going to make our goal this year, and you guys just made our goal for us. So thank you very much. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> the cookies will be donated to first responders in Louisville and Superior, and the girls get to see what a caring community is all about. It just lets you see the good in humanity and in people, and this is just another example. We think about emotionally where they've been since December 30th. This is the happiest we've seen them. This isn't a dream, this is just a miracle. So thank you very much. I'm Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. That's all for our Marshall Fire Denver 7 Give special. We really appreciate all of the help you have provided over the past year. You have shown the people and the communities of Louisville, Superior, and Boulder County just how much we can make a difference when we all come together. If you've been inspired over the past half hour, you can still donate to our Denver 7 Gives Wildfire Fund. Just head to denver7.com and click on the Denver 7 Gives tab. Thank you for watching.